to interpret the story of nine black students who, in striving to get a better education, tested the 1954 um, ruling of Brown versus Board of Education. So they kind of became enrolled in the battle between the state's rights, federal law, um, as they integrated Little Rock Central High School, and kind of in turn inspired the movement, the civil rights movement at the time. Robin did sneak in, so she's our superintendent. Um, we invite you afterwards to go through the exhibits. And also, there is a book signing following. I'll show you. Um, Tammy Lisa Carmen. It is between two races, not black, not white, but both. So we have a full afternoon. But, hi. Um, it is, I'm honored to introduce our speaker to you. Edmund Davis was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, but thankfully now he resides with us in Little Rock. He's a public and motivational speaker. He's an author. He's a history instructor at Arkansas Baptist College and the University of Phoenix. So you know he's very busy. Um, he earned an undergraduate degree from Grambling State University and a master's degree in history from Louisiana Technical University. It's believed that he has the largest collection of Arkansas Tuskegee Airmen history memorabilia, memorabilia in the country. Um, it's cataloged into the company he co-founded, which is Aviate Knowledge Inc. Knowledge Production. Uh, materials from this collection are currently on display at Mosaic Templars Cultural Center and have been viewed at University of, University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff and Little Rock's Bill and Hillary Clinton National Airport. Um, Davis has uh, authored a number of published encyclopedia entries, magazine articles on the Tuskegee Airmen, the Civil Rights Movement, and Women in Aviation. He was a board member of the Aerospace Education Center and is the current National Vice Chair of History for Groove by Groove Social Fellowship Incorporated. He's also, which is really cool, a personal historian to aviation legend Milton P. Crenshaw, the only living supervising squadron commander of the Tuskegee Airmen. Now, Mr. Crenshaw is a proud father and husband to Mrs. Monica Davis. He is featured in Davis's newly published book, And it's pioneering African American aviators featuring the Tuskegee Airmen of Arkansas, which you can purchase from our bookstore, and he would be happy to sign for you after this, and that will be out right outside. So please join me in welcoming Edmund Davis. Uh, you're like a kid in a candy store with that great introduction. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to give first credit to the Lord for allowing me to wake up this morning and bring me here to be able to you all. Okay, I would like to thank for that National Park Service with Central High School for the business of the year. Ms. Robin, thank you. I would like to thank Ms. Beard Tricky. And I want to definitely give a shout out to my wife who's sitting right over there. This is Monica Davis for being the power behind all this. She's been able to inspire not only me but some of my other colleagues about writing but this all together. And so without her, I couldn't do too much. So I want to thank her for coming as well. Okay. Well, greetings and welcome. How y'all doing? Greetings. All right. Well, let me put a small disclaimer out there before we go ahead and get started. And that disclaimer has to do with the note cards right there. If you have any questions, we'll go ahead and ask you all to write those questions down as we proceed. That way, when we open up the Q&A discussion, you won't be able to, uh, well, you should be able to remember your questions so that you can write those down. Okay? All right. Okay, now of course, like Ranger Robertson mentioned here, this is the uh, 55th anniversary, the commemorative events of the Little Rock Crises, where today we're going to recognize the anniversary of the desegregation crises. We're using this book as a resource, and of course, the book that uh, Mr. Merritt talked about, Pioneer African American Aviation, is featuring the Tuskegee Airmen of Arkansas. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and motivate and move forward. Now, this book here, I'm going to stand over here. It talks about a few things, and this is pretty much the uh, overview or breakdown furnished uh, by the overview. And we'll have a discussion real quickly on the book cover. Then we'll have, and we'll talk about the four by Coach Roscoe Draper. And then, of course, the content of this book talks about examining early trailblazers in their efforts of the early 20th century. 
these aeronauts that predate Tuskegee. And the second part of the book talks about Arkansas's delegation of Tuskegee Airmen pilots. Also, it says here for subtopics, okay, you have documented and undocumented aviators, and we'll talk about that. Of course, combat pilots and then non-combat pilots from Arkansas. And then, of course, we have a small section for European Americans or our white or our Caucasian family who were very instrumental in helping the Tuskegee Airmen program get underway. And then also here it says, the last part of this book, again, it talks about African American pilots, of whether these civilian or military aviators from different parts of the country, but mainly from the ones from Arkansas. Now, real quick, who can name some civil rights pioneers, freedom fighters from Arkansas between 1935 and 1950? Who wants to take that question? Who knows? Arkansas, some civil rights people who just stand out. What comes to mind when you think about civil rights or freedom fighters from Arkansas between 1935 and 1950? Civil rights. Sue Khan Williams. <laughs> okay. Well, this book talks about the civil rights standouts. Okay. These standouts are aviators. These standouts are aeronauts. These standouts are from the civilian sector and also from the military sector. And before there was a Rosa Parks, before the world knew who Rosa Parks was, okay, the world recognized, in the aviation circles, the world recognized not just Milton Crenshaw, but also Cornelius Coffee. Cornelius Coffee was the first African American in the world, not even in the country, but in the world, to have his own airport out of Oak Lawn, Illinois, South South Chicago, as it's called today. And he's from Newport, Arkansas. Newport, Arkansas is not too far from here. And so, of course, we have to pay homage to him. He was a civil rights fighter because he fought many barriers as it relates to uh, ethnicism, as we call it racism, in the early 20th century. Okay? And of course, the others, by way of Tuskegee, and what they did in that experience, those were all civil rights activists. Okay, so this book is, uh, you know, carrying parallels to that. Okay, now this is an Arkansas history book, but it's not just an Arkansas history book, it's an American history book. Okay, it's not an African American history book, it's an American history book. It just happens to talk about the experiences of several people, several dozen folks, okay, at Tuskegee. It talks about black history. It talks about Arkansas heritage. Yes, ladies, it does highlight the women who show Tuskegee Airmen how to fly. A lot of people don't really realize a lot of women show Tuskegee Airmen how to fly, okay? Now, before we go any further, we want to break down the book cover, okay? Here's the book cover, as we know. This is the book cover right here. And I'll use this laser right here to just point out this person right here is William T. Madison. He was a pilot, he was an aviator. He saw combat during the uh, Mediterranean theaters and in Ramitali, Italy with the Red Tails. He was a Red Tail pilot, okay? And this picture down here, all right, this picture down here, in the center right here, this is Milton P. Crenshaw. He's still alive, we all know who he is. And behind Mr. Crenshaw is a bust, a bronze bust of Booker T. Washington, who was the first president of Tuskegee. He founded Tuskegee. Okay, here is Roscoe Draper. For those who don't know, Mr. Crenshaw has a, a counterpart named Roscoe Draper who wrote the foreword to this book. Roscoe Draper is like the Milton Crenshaw of Pennsylvania, if you will. He's about 93 years old. Incidentally, he sent me an email this morning at 93 talking about the book that he won. Okay? Again, here's a picture of Mr. Draper. His AKA name is Coach. All right, a lot of students call him Coach. And of course, the movie Red Tails, as we'll talk about here in a second, the person that played coach in that movie was Cuba Good Jr. But this was the real coach in real life. All records indicate that. Roscoe Draper wrote the forward. Of course, here's the picture again. Milton Crenshaw, the arrows point to him in the center. And here's Roscoe Draper. And Claude Platt is right here. These are the only three that are still alive in the whole world. And Mr. Crenshaw being supervising squadron commander of this unit here, okay? 
just a little tidbit. If you're here to learn something, raise your hand for me real fast. If you're here to learn something. Okay, I'll go ahead and go into my teacher outfit right here. Pictures like this class, oh, excuse me, picture like this, folks, okay? The person that's always centered in the middle from World War II pictures and World War I pictures, more than likely they were either the top pilots, the ones that had the best instructor ratings, or the ones that were the commanders. In this case, you see here almost who's the center in the middle. Here's Bill Crenshaw, okay? Now, this is a collage, and it's talking about the second, the first part of the book, Pioneering African American Aviators. Not the second part, the second part is featuring the Tuskegee Airmen of Arkansas. So this first part, this image here, just kind of shows us and gives us a visual image of Jacques' bullet. Eugene Jacques' bullet right here. He has his Nino Brown look right here. Of course, those who know who Nino Brown is, of course, played by Wesley Snipes in New Jack City. He has his look here. He kind of favors Wesley Snipes, does he not? Okay. Well, this person right here was the first African American to actually see aerial combat overseas in the European theater during World War I. Okay, that's who Bullard is. All right, and all right here is Howard Hurd, and of course Chauncey Spencer, who I had the opportunity to speak to his son about four or five years ago, who's still alive in his 70s. Okay, also right here is Charles Benny, and the book talks about these guys with their short biographies in this book as well. These are the trailblazers of aviation. Of course, Mr. Crenshaw here again, but this is Chief Anderson, who was also, before Crenshaw, a trailblazer. He had 3,500 hours of flight experience before he got to Tuskegee. And of course, Mr. Anderson, Chief, as they call him, is a Pennsylvania native like myself. And uh, he faced a lot of what we call ethnicism, or today people mostly say it's racism and a lot of barriers as it relates to being a pioneer. Here is the person we talked about, Cornelius Coffey. For those who have smartphones, if you have a smartphone, raise your hand. We all have smartphones. Just in your spare time, just kind of look up Cornelius Coffey and see what you can find. Well, Cornelius Coffey, again, is from Newport, Arkansas, and he was the world's first uh, man of color in terms of being a licensed mechanic and pilot. And uh, he was the founder of the Coffey School of Aeronautics. And he, of course, moved uh, to Chicago and says Oak Lawn, Illinois, which uh, is real small right now. Women trailblazers of flight. And again, like I said previously, a lot of people didn't realize how many women showed the Tuskegee Airmen how to fly. If you didn't know that, raise your hand. We have a few people. I appreciate your honesty. It's always good to get something new. And I'm not a stingy person. I'm going to share it with you. So in this sharing moment right here, know that Elizabeth Coleman, a.k.a. Bessie, she got her pilot certificate in around 1922, 1923. And after that, Willoughby Brown, she received hers, but just like her husband, who was Cornelius Coffey, okay, that's the first power couple in aviation history. Okay, your husband's Cornelius Coffey, you're Willa Brown. She was the first, uh, not just African-American woman, but the first woman, period, with the Civil Aeronautics Patrol. She was from Indiana, but her husband was from Arkansas. She taught the Tuskegee Airmen how to fly. Most records don't indicate that. Uh, seven years of research suggesting some witnesses who were trained by her uh, let me know that she was uh, one of their instructors. Okay. Now, read this real quick. Notable European Americans, Caucasians, uh, our white family were active agents of change when it came to supporting the African Americans in the aviation industry, civilian and military in the United States. Who can name one? Who can name one? Tell me a European American, one of our Caucasian family, who helped to support and that actually helped get off the ground the Tuskegee military experience. Somebody name one for us. Who was that? Several cents, Eleanor Roosevelt. Eleanor Roosevelt? That's Ralph, and you're right. See, we give the treats out here. But it came from over here. It came over here. Who said that? Young lady right here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, what shall we give it our candy? Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, y'all can answer some questions now. Okay, so she's name one, Eleanor Roosevelt. She was one of those persons. She is definitely right. Here's the list for those who've never known, okay? Of course, the names that stand out are in gold here, Forrest Shelton. He, of course, was in class with Milton Crenshaw and was trained by a lot of uh, Caucasians who were at Maxwell Air Force Base. 1940. 
Okay, the other one that stands out to me is Harry S. Truman. He was a senator then, but of course became president. Harry Truman, uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower, who was also before he became president, was a good supporter of the Tuskegee military experience. And Julius Rosenwald, who was a well-endowed philanthropist, he gave a lot of money back to not just Tuskegee Institute, but many institutions, many schools, HBCUs, okay? So these ones just kind of stand out. And of course, the Wall Parish. Here's a picture, okay, like Ms. Phyllis had mentioned earlier when she gave her correct answer. If it wasn't for this ride right here, we're not sure where Tuskegee or the Tuskegee Airmen would have been, you know, their destiny. Okay, because this ride happened, I think it was April 14, 1941. Six years <coughs> before World War One, World War II had, you know, been motivated from our part uh, in terms of reaction from what the Japanese did. But of course, who knows, okay, who knows where this program, this military experiment would have went had not Mrs. Roosevelt, okay, came down there because she was real cool with Julius Rosenwald who told her about this group of Negro pilots who wanted to fly. And so she came down, and uh, the Secret Service says, no, you don't want to go there. These Negroes, are you crazy? You want to let's go to Negroes, get thing with Negroes. So she says, look, I'm going to do it. So of course, they called the president, FDR. FDR says, she's the boss, let her do what she wants to do. And she got on that plane, and of course, Milton Crenshaw actually strapped her in with that seatbelt. But this person here, of course, is Chief Anderson, and this is our history. Here's a picture of Noel Parrish. Noel Parrish, of course, ranking U.S. Army Air Corps officer over the civilian pilot training program at Tuskegee. Now, it's dear to my heart to uh, mention this, so I wanted to go ahead and publish it in here. How is this book relevant to the uh, Little Rock Central High School crisis of 57 and those involved at the time? Who wants to answer that question? How is this book relevant in any capacity? How is it? Who wants to take a guess? Yes, sir. I'd say it was a uh, based a foundation for the integration of both people. Okay, it's the foundation, and I'm glad that he took a stand on that and said, so I'm going to give him some. I'm just in a, giving out food right now, okay? Thank you. Who else wants to follow up with uh, what the young man had mentioned? Who else wants to follow up with that? Why is this book relevant to uh, anything related to uh, what we celebrate this week or what we commemorate with the 55th of the Central High School Crisis? Anybody want to take another guess? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, a lot of people were trying to, they were trying to keep the Tuskegee Airmen from flying. They didn't want them to fly at all. Just they like they didn't want the Little Rock Nine to go to school. Okay. Those are relevant stories. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Who wants to go a little bit more deeper into it? A little bit more deeper. Some of y'all know the answer, but uh, you're scared you might get it wrong. No, you're all right. I got candy for you. I'm going to give it out. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Here's one of the, uh, the biggest one right here. This person right here is Reverend J.C. Crenshaw. And this is at his 9th Street downtown at the time, 9th Street downtown. It was the uh, Harlem of Little Rock at the time. And uh, there's a connection between Tuskegee and the Little Rock Nine. And this book kind of mentions it in a few sentences. Okay, but Milton Crenshaw, this is his father. This is the father of the only living supervisor squadron commander of the Tuskegee Airmen, Milton Crenshaw, but this is his father. And his father was, okay, one of the patriarchs of the Little Rock Nine. We all know who Daisy Bates was. That street right there is named after her. But not too many people know about uh, Reverend J.C. Crenshaw, who was the first officer of the NAACP from 1919 until the early 1970s, okay? For those who uh, have any doubts about this, here is an image here. And this is from the source down here. It says, from the uh, Democrat Gazette archives. And of course, in his childhood years upon returning to Little Rock, World War II, Milton Crenshaw worked for his father at this shop and also had the Little Rock Nine members meet up there uh, as well in secret, if you will. This is the uh, article here from the Crenshaw Tailoring Shop where Daisy Bates agreed to meet with uh, the Little Rock chapter president of the NAACP, uh, Reverend J.C. Crenshaw, who was also an associate pastor at Mount Pleasant Baptist Church uh, for 65 years. So he died in 1979, well after the world became familiar with the Tuskegee uh, issue. And of course, we all know who she is, Daisy Bates, Civil Rights Crusader, and one of my colleagues, Griff Stockley, wrote this great book. And uh, on page 49 and page 47, Daisy Bates even talks about how she took classes 
at Philanda Smith College. And when she took classes at Philanda Smith before the world knew who the Rock Knight were, she had taken classes with Bill Crenshaw, who was teaching aviation classes at Philanda Smith College. Okay? And so uh, that's the connection uh, between the Tuskegee. Not the only, but that's one, and that's the obvious connection between the Little Rock Nine, of course, the Crenshaw legacy, and also uh, with Daisy Bates. There's another one, NAACP Honors Baptist Minister uh, for a long time service. Of course, here's the question here Who are the Tuskegee Airmen of Arkansas besides Milton Crenshaw? Okay, who can name one? Besides Milton Crenshaw, who can name one? Coffee. Okay, coffee. He came before. He was a trailblazer, but he was from Arkansas. And because you're a student of mine, I have to give a shout out to ABC <laughs> students. We're going to give you some candy. Yes, yes, indeed. I like the feet. Okay. Besides Milton Crenshaw, who can name another Tuskegee Airman from the natural state? Okay. There are. Okay, Miss Linda McDowell in the back, one of my esteemed colleagues. She's like a big sister to me. Miss Linda is definitely right. And uh, no, I haven't forgotten about you. I'm going to go ahead and pass her some candy back here. Mm -hmm. Yes. She is right. We're going to let the candy circulate because I feel the crowd getting warmed up here. Okay. But Dr. Granville Cox, who is a pioneer in his own right, and yes, he is a Tuskegee Emmer from Arkansas. The second half of this book recognizes the error from the natural state, okay? And the Cox name is right here, Dr. Granville Cox, okay? This is a list of Arkansas's original Tuskegee Airmen documented and undocumented, all right? And according to the text here, these men served from 1941 to 1946, and as of September this year, okay, three are still alive. And of course, those three are Milton Crenshaw, Dr. Granville Cox, and Jerry T. Hodges Jr. Those are the three that are still alive, okay? Now, of course, this is easy. Who wants this? Y'all want some candy now, huh? What's his name? Who knows his name? Y'all can take an educated guess and get this one right. Who wants to guess? It's a yes. Pass the candy bucket over, okay? Miss Terrace has got more candy. She wants more. And here is him. Ladies and gentlemen, the foundation of this book was based on my relationship with Mr. Milton Crenshaw. Okay, working at Pulaski Tech at the time, I invited him to come over to speak to one class, and my department chair said, hold on, you have who coming? No, he needs to speak to the whole campus. And so I went from speaking to 32 students to speaking to maybe roughly 1,000 students at that time in 2005, okay? But of course, as we know his title, a real humble man, but he is the person uh, that was uh, put in my life to have this uh, book become what it is today. And again, supervising right here, this is a picture from 71 years ago, okay? This is Mr. Crenshaw, there's Chief. He was the group commander, he was the squadron commander, he was the co-squadron commander, and here's Lewis Jackson, director of training. And this was 1942, so 70 years ago. And here is Mr. Crenshaw about five years ago down at the Butler Center at that time in 2007. And again, what did we say about persons taking pictures and those in the middle? Who can recall what we said? That they are like the... <laughs> that they are the leader or like the higher rank people in the military? Yes, pass the candy. I'm sorry, pass the candy. Okay. <laughs> When you see Mr. Crenshaw, if you can't see, I'm sorry, but this is him right here. He signed this. I think he signed it in 47, but this is him. He's not up here, but he's in the back because of his height. We know he's about 6'2", okay? Here again is Mr. Crenshaw, but in this picture, Mr. Grover, he's on the side right here. Again, he signed this as well, okay? Primary flight instructors. I'm going to go out on a limb and give this remote to the person that can point out where Mr. Crenshaw is. Here you go. She says she can find it. Okay, you can click in the middle. Let's give her a hand. 
I'm happy to give you over to see what I can do. Thank you, Mayor. She's so right. Thank you, Mr. Robert. This is Mr. Kershaw, and this picture here was from, I want to say, fall 1943. But this picture, and I want the ladies in our attendance to see that, yes, there is women in the higher ranks at Tuskegee almost 70 years ago. They don't talk about them in too many books, but I wanted to show this picture. I was uh, allowed to give access to a document at Maxwell Air Force Base that declassified some information, and they allowed me to come down here and check this out a few years back. And I was allowed to get this picture right here. And I saw, uh, besides my wife, my best friend, Bill Crenshaw. Here's another picture of our esteemed aviator, Mr. Crenshaw. There's chief of uh, the person who was over the program at that time, G.L. Washington. Uh, Claude Platt right there, okay, and Charles Williams. Here again is Mr. Crenshaw. All right, and for those who can see, this says Central Flying Service, and then it says Flight Training Detachment Central Flying Service right here. This was in collaboration with Philander Smith College from 1947 to 1953. A lot of folks didn't know. West of the Mississippi River, Philander Smith College was the only college outside, well, west of the Mississippi. Tuskegee was on the east of the Mississippi, but west of the Mississippi River. Philander Smith College had an aviation detachment in the state of Arkansas. Here's a picture of our esteemed Crenshaw with his wife, Ruby. And this was taken down on 9th Street. Another picture of uh, the philander activities going on with aviation. There again is Milton Crenshaw. Here is Earl Stahlcups, who died about two years ago. I went to his wedding. He got married at 83 years old. Wow. And his wife was 50 years old. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here again, Crenshaw. He was one of two crop dusters in the 1940s and 1950s. Okay. He traveled from Fort Seal, Oklahoma, to Fort Rucker, Alabama, and also to Fort Stewart, Georgia. But these uh, areas were called camps back then. Now they're called forts uh, in today's culture. Here's a more recent picture of Milton Crenshaw standing with the Holbert family. That is Richard Holbert, uh, Dick Holbert, and is also his wife, Mrs. Holbert. He's the CEO and president of Central Flying Service, okay, which runs the largest fixed operation uh, air wing uh, that's under a roof in the world. And they're down here at our uh, aviation in industrial complex with Central Flying Service. Mr. Crenshaw worked for them when he got out of Tuskegee for a number of years as a contracted aviator. He also was a contracted crop tester with Central Flying Service. Here's Little Perk, as they call it. Okay, this is Marcus A. Perkins, a Little Rock native. He was also a pilot for Tuskegee and of course a cadet. Here's Dr. Richard Caesar. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Caesar passed away last December. I think it was December the 20th. His wife sent me an email and she said, uh, you know, the doctor is no longer with us. So, you know, I want to definitely give praise to him. And he allowed me to interview him in California a few years ago and uh, had some great conversations. And uh, he was the first of his kind. He was also a red-tailed pirate. Here is Dr. Cox, okay, Nebraska graduate. He was also a Harvard Medical School graduate. And the book doesn't talk about, but we'll go ahead and revise it for the new edition next year. But he was sweet mates with Dr. Martin Luther King. When Dr. King was in Baltimore, excuse me, when he was in Boston University working on his uh, doctorate degree in theology, he was working on his medical degree, okay, at Harvard Medical School, and they were sweet mates. And he just told me this this year, Dr. Cox did, okay? He also attended uh, Arkansas Baptist College, and for those in attendance now who go to Arkansas Baptist College, raise your hand. Yes, ABC got some swag going on right now. Go ahead and recognize them. Here again is Dr. Cox right here. This is a class 1945C. Here is Dr. Cox at a speaking event with current ABC president, uh, Oman Fitzgerald Hill. Two of a kind right here, standing in what we call Old Main, all right? Dr. Cox said when his father, because his father was the fifth president of Arkansas Baptist College from 1937 to 1955, he said, no, this is called Cox Hall. 
he was saying when he was a student back in 1943, they called it Cox Hall. And he was a student at Arkansas Baptist College, where his father was president at that time before he went on to Tuskegee. This is him and Milton Crenshaw. They took this picture. Uh, it says here the 13th of July of this year. Here's a picture of Dr. Cox with, of course, we all know who the lady in the middle is, but this is his wife on the side, excuse me, his daughter on the side right here, uh, Mrs. Uh, Cox here. We all know this is Robin Roberts. Her father was a living Tuskegee Airman who passed away about five or six years ago. Her mother just passed away recently, too. And her health is in jeopardy now as well, we all know, and we're keeping up and, uh, with uh, Ms. Robin Roberts. I definitely want to send her a book. If y'all can help me get her a book, of course, free of charge. Uh, because uh, she's done a whole lot into, as it relates to getting exposure to the Tuskegee Airmen. This is a picture of me and Dr. Cox. Y'all don't want to look at that. <laughs> Here's Jerry T. Hodges. Dr. Hodges right here. Jerry T. Hodges. He is the most recent inductee and the only one that's alive that's not in the Arkansas Black Hall of Fame. I talked to Charles Stewart a couple of weeks ago and uh, he's going to be inducted this year. I think it's October the 20th, he will be inducted into the next Arkansas Hall of Fame. Jerry T. Hodges here. Here's another red tail, and this is William T. Madison. For those, I'll go ahead and pass this around. If you haven't seen the movie, it's a great movie. But he's another red tail, of course. My source is from the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. This was from 2007, okay, from the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. I'll go ahead and pass that around. It talks further about the exploits of William T. Madison. Here again, where is he standing at? In the, in the middle. Okay, he's standing in the middle. This would suggest again that he was a top dog pilot. He had plenty of aviation swag, <coughs> as my students will talk about if you have swag. He had plenty of it. He's in the middle. He's not even paying attention. But uh, this picture, if you type in Tuskegee image, and you'll see a lot. I got this image from uh, the Historical Research Center out of Maxwell Air Force Base. They allowed me to get this information to be classified. Here is the most famous of all Tuskegee Airmen, Benjamin Davis Jr. We all know who he is. He's a household name in aviation history. Okay, but guess who's sitting right here in front of him? William T. Madison, okay? He's from Conway, Arkansas, too, if I didn't mention that before. There's a street in Conway named Madison Drive, and it's named after William T. Madison. Here again, getting back to the book cover, Again, he's on the book cover right here. William T. Madison, as you can see, that's part of his last name, Madison. That's him. This picture was taken, I want to say, 1944. This is Woodrow Woody Crocker. Woodrow Crocker just passed away a month ago today. He died in August, most August 16th. The same day Elvis Presley died in 77. He died in 2012, this year. He was also a red tail pilot who saw combat overseas, was real good friends with uh, another uh, Arkansas Bill Clinton, uh, Woodrow Crockett, legend. Here's another picture of Woodrow Crockett. Here's a picture of me and Woodrow Crockett at an interview, and he has his red tails jacket on. Here's Anderson, Alfred Anderson from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. He wasn't a red tail, but he was the first man ever to parachute uh, out of Tuskegee. He was a parachute. He was the first man to parachute at Tuskegee. He's from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Now, in closing, after reading the contents of this book, you should be able to identify names of the Tuskegee Airmen from the natural state, describe the impact Arkansas made in history, not only in history, but aviation history, military history, and also different social spheres of the 20th century. From Looking at what Dr. Cox did, I didn't mention it, okay, but you can Google search him too, all right? He has two patents and is an inventor. He's a radiologist, semi-retired, okay, but he's also a breast cancer specialist. So he's done many of things for, uh, in the medical community. And also it says at the bottom to discuss duties civilians had in the military during World War II and at peace times, okay? so. This resource has several areas where you can take advantage of and read it. There's also a quiz in the book as well. At the end of the book, there's a quiz, and there's an answer section for those who need the answers too. It's in the book as well, okay? I want to say thank you for attending this 
in this first of a series of commemorative events for the 55th anniversary of 57 crises with this book signing, and we're going to open up now for a Q&A. That's why we gave out those index cards for those that have questions about what documented is, about what undocumented is, about civilian versus military, about the 15th Tuskegee Airmen at Arkansas had, and we all know there were five red tails. Arkansas had five red tails. This movie doesn't give a good impression of the actual names of the Tuskegee Airmen. Thank you. These names in this movie are fictitious names, but at the same time, we know that the red tails were very real, just like the Japanese Americans in Tunisia uh, that served during World War II as well. But before we have the QA, I wanted to also give a special thanks to uh, Ms. Spirit, uh, Ms. Robin, and Ms. Tamara for allowing me to come here. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up the floor for a QA right now. Who has questions about this resource? 